P-O-S-T. P-O-S-T. Post, the serials you like the most, brings you the Roy Rogers Show, starring the king of the cowboys himself, Roy Rogers. It's Roundup Time on the Double R Bar. So saddle your horse, cause we're gonna ride far. The Double R Bar Ranch transcribes stories and songs of the real west with the Whippoorwills. The wisest trail scout of them all, Jonah Wilde, played by Forrest Lewis. The Queen of the West, Day 11. And in person, the King of the Cowboys, Roy Rogers. <laughs> Well, howdy, folks. This is Roy Rogers. I'll bet I know what you buckaroos are having for breakfast tomorrow. Post cereals, the same as I am. We keep post cereals on the shelf all the time here at the ranch because we know, just as you do, that you can count on anything bearing the brand name Post. Well, sir, Paradise Valley and the territory around it is on an emergency basis right now on account of a big storm. We're all working to undo the damage that was done. Uh, Dick, I've got a telegram I want you to send out right now. Well, now, I'll get to it as quick as I can, Mr. Bailey. You'll do it now. I almost forgot my wife's birthday, and I have to order a present by wire. Won't be here in time. Don't say, uh... Well, I doubt if I can send a telegram of that nature before tomorrow afternoon or evening. You what? Big storm, you know, what these people hurt and so much damage done. I've been given orders not to send anything but emergency messages. This until it... is an emergency. My wife's birthday is day after tomorrow. The company ain't met, Mrs. Bailey. They won't see it in that light. Company? <laughs> the two-bit organization you work for isn't a company. All you got one loop of wire. And that loop of wire connects this territory with outside, including the big telegraph company. I'm not here to argue. I'm here to tell you to send this telegram. Do her as quick as I can. Now, within the hour. I'm sorry, I got my orders. I believe in them and I'm following them. I'm a big man, Harris. I hold oh, considerable... Oh, Mr. Bailey, if you was a big man, you wouldn't ask that injured people wait for attention just so your wife could get her birthday present on time. I'm asking once more, Harris. Are you going to send this message now? Mr. Bailey, I'm going to take care of important things first and send your wire the first minute after, but not before. <laughs> all the riders we can spare, Mac. I got a special job for them. Yeah, the rest are looking after the stock that got cut off by the storm. Reckon these boys can do any job you got for them, no. I want the Paradise Valley Telegraph Company put out of business. Their lines run across my ranch. Cut them, then keep the repairman off. Keep everybody off. Cutting those lines is a violation of the law, ain't it? As far as anybody will know, the lines were weakened by a storm. And a gust of wind finished the job. Well, I'm not questioning your authority, Mr. Bailey, but ain't the company got a right to go if on the land? If you're worrying you... about whether I have the right to keep repairmen off my land, forget it. Okay. Just between us, Dick Harris is trying to push me around. Ordinarily, the company would stand by him. He's been with them 20 years. But the valley needs the telegraph right now. And I'm sure if we use a little pressure, the company will see things my way. I don't like being pushed around. I won't take it, ever. Especially from an underling like Dick Harris. Dick Harris, at his post in the telegraph office, is the one link that connects Paradise Valley with the outside world. His messages, and his messages alone, can bring help. He's been on the job for 48 sleepless hours. His eyes burn, his body is heavy, stiff. But he doggedly continues sending and receiving messages that will aid his... Wait. The telegraph line has gone dead. Dick cries again. There's no sound. Paradise Valley is cut off from the outside world. The door behind Dick opens. A visitor has come in. Dick turns around. He recognizes his visitor. Dick, I wish you'd send a wire to Earlville. If they can put 20 teams to work... I think we can clear Indian Head Pass. Line's dead, Roy. I just came from there, and it's not as bad as the other roads. The line's dead, Roy. What? I can't get a message through. 
You mean a wire's down somewhere? Or yeah, yeah, that's it. Which direction? Can you tell? Uh, sure, I can tell, but it may be miles from here. Somewhere's in the mountains where the storm has got well, to... Just a... tell me which direction, that's all. I'll follow the line until I find the break. Whether it's one mile or 50, that wire's worth more to us right now than any amount of money. Head up to the peak, Jonah. We can see the line in both directions for a long way from there. We saved a couple of miles by riding up here, whether we see a break or not. Well, I hope we find it quick, the way I feel. I know, Jonah. You suffered a big loss in the storm. Oh, never be the same again. Hey, I think I see the break. Convolutions. Just below us on Ed Belly's range. Come on, we'll head down that way. Maybe luck's with us this time. Mr. Bailey says nobody comes on his land, Rogers. And when he says nobody, we take it to mean just that. Your name's McCormick, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. Matty McCormick, Bailey's foreman. Yeah, personal, I'd never guessed you was a foreman. Hold it, Jonah. Looks more like a fellow who's run for state senator twice and got beat both times. McCormick, the Valley Telegraph Company line is down. We think we spotted the break on this ranch. I guess you know how much folks need it. There's no use arguing with us, Rogers. You're not getting through. We've got Bailey's order. All right. You can stop us legally, but I'd hope we'd fix the line ourselves and save a couple of hours. You can't. All we can do is ride back and get the telegraph company to send out a man to take care of things. You won't be able to stop him. The company has a legal right Stand to... Stand one and see. Come on, Jonah. We're wasting time. Let's go. Gordon Weber hasn't come in, has he? Hi, Roy. Jonah. Howdy. No, I haven't seen him all day. We'll have to wait then. Say, did you find the break in the telegraph line? Yeah. Dick told me all about it. It's on Ed Bailey's ranch. We're to escort Gordon out and make sure there's no trouble about fixing it. Jonah doesn't look as though he's in a mood to handle much of anything. Yeah, you notice it too, hmm? You know, a tragedy has come into Jonah's life, Dale. Yeah, all humped over like a hairpin. <laughs> What's the matter? Well, Dale, you know I'm writing a book on the people I met and the experiences I had with them. Yeah, I know you've been talking about writing it. Yeah, well, I started. Got five pages done. Oh, five pages of literature. Mm. Now, I tell you, Dale, they would have made Longfellow lay down his quill and get an honest job. <laughs> <laughs> Good, huh? Well, it was as if Shakespeare had bit me. Now, I'm just glad to hear it, Jonah. Five pages. Small writing, too. Real cramped. Oh, yeah, well. Why, what's the matter? Well, I had my window open the night of the big wind. Oh, no. Yeah, yeah. Ain't seen them since. You remember what they were about, though, don't you? Well, sure, but I'll never get the words strung out like I had them. <laughs> Shakespeare never bites twice in the same place. <laughs> the garden's just riding up, Jonah. Let's save time. See you later, Dale. All right. Keep your chin up, Jonah. Say, if you see the sheriff, send him out to the Bailey Ranch, will you? Just in case there should be trouble. You bet. Stay on your horse, Gordon. We're riding right now. <laughs> Mac, folks need help. We can't get it without the telegraph. Yeah, besides, you can't stop us. I showed you papers proving I work for the telegraph company. The uh, polecat probably can't read my book. The no company wow. has a right to maintain its lines. That's in Bailey's deed. Yeah, no wonder so many authors die poor. People can't read. Bailey says nobody crosses his boundary and nobody does. Tell one of your writers to bring Bailey here. Mr. Bailey don't want to be disturbed right now. No, we're not going to let people suffer because one man is stubborn. We'll have to cross the line without permission. Hey, I'm with you, Roy. Now you're talking. I wouldn't if I were you, Rogers. Just stand back. We won't draw first, but if somebody draws, we'll shoot first. Come on, Trigger. Oh, here, here's Dale and old Tin Star, Roy. Oh, 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 Trigger. Yeah, cause is lost now for sure. Old Tin Star showed up. Just a minute here. What's going on? Well, I thought I'd better come out, Roy. The crew at the lunchroom can handle things there. Okay. Roy, you're not thinking of entering Bailey's ranch. I'm going to do more than think about it, Sheriff. Sorry, but if you try to cross, I'll have to stop you. Gordon, I guess you'll have to go alone. Nobody go. 
Bailey claims the deed doesn't give the telegraph company permission to cross his land. He got an injunction forbidden it. Yeah, the case has to be tried in court now, Roy. With people hurt and damage done, that'll take months. The law is the law. Yeah, there's more to this than we know, Roy. Bailey tried to get the company to fire Dick Harris. And when they wouldn't, he had his lawyer ask for the injunction. Yeah. Jonah, Gordon, looks as though Bailey has beaten us. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, look, Keen Star, why couldn't you have busted your leg or something on the way here? Then we wouldn't have known about the injunction until too late. Button your lip, General's boy. Uh, I got something to say to you later. Serious. Hey, Roy, you coming? Yeah, we'll leave. But that line will be repaired by morning. Injunction or no injunction, you can count on that. Okay, Sheriff. We're stopping in at the cafe. Well, I have to go on down to the office. Uh, I guess you know it's my job to see that court orders are enforced and the court gave them that injunction. Well, uh, there are... are times, though, when I think the law is wrong. Well, we understand that, Sheriff. Well, good luck on getting that line repaired. Thanks. I'll be looking for you later, author. Yes, well, knowing you, I better doubt you don't find me. Let's go inside, Gordon. Hey, you got an idea how we can get to that line, Roy? Yeah, I have. We'll talk about it in here. There mustn't be any more delay than we can help. Howdy. Oh. Well, howdy. Hey. Folks know me, don't you, Pat Sullivan? Ed Bailey's nephew. Well, we know you, Pat. I stopped by to let you know I, I don't hold with my uncle as far as that broken line's concerned. Well, now, that's pretty nice, Pat. And anything I can do to help fix it, well, you just let me know. I don't think you'd better stick your neck out that far, Pat. Your uncle thinks too much of you. Well, he ought to think still more of me if he knows I have a mind of my own. Hey, how long has this been going on? A real soldier in the same family with a polecat. Stick with us, Pat. We want to save all the trouble we can, so we're waiting until sundown. And after sundown, we're crossing Bailey's land to fix that line. <laughs> As the gray shadows of twilight are overcome by the blackness of night, Roy, Dale, and Jonah cross the boundaries of Ed Bailey's land. Gordon Weber and Pat Sullivan are with them. They go by a direct route to the broken line, prepared to do the job quickly. Give me your lineman spikes, Gordon. I'll go up the pole. You stay below and tell me how the job should be done. I got the spikes and belt on already, Roy. I'll go up myself. Steel climbing spikes give off a bruising sound as they dig into the wood of the telegraph pole. Gordon climbs swiftly, carrying one end of the broken line with him. As the others watch, he begins splicing the wire. Then... Roy, a shot! Yeah, Bailey's riders. They've been lying in wait. I'm hit! I'm hit! They've hit Gordon. They've tried to pick him off. And now we'll have to do some picking off ourselves. your ear to the ground for a way to get more out of breakfast? Then listen to this and track down a package of new, improved Post Toasties. Post Toasties, deep good corn flakes. The best thing that's happened to corn since the Indians discovered it. Deep good corn flakes. Post Toasties, deep good corn flakes. Imagine the full, fresh flavor of corn toasted into flakes so crisp, so fresh, they won't mush up in milk. That's Post Toasties, the heap good cornflakes. And every luscious bowl full of Post Toasties with sugar and milk is chock full of Buck and Bronco energy, too. Remember, till you've tried Post Toasties, you'll never know how good cornflakes can be. Post Toasties, the best thing that's happened to corn since the Indians discovered it. Post Toasties, heap good cornflakes. The best thing that's happened to corn since the Indians discovered it. Eat good corn flakes. Post toasties, eat good corn flakes. A shot cuts through the darkness. The lineman of the telegraph pole yells in pain. Roy realizes that Bailey must have stationed some of his riders to guard the broken line and that this shot will certainly be heard by the others guarding the boundaries to the ranch. Hey, I seen where that shot come from, Roy. So did I. We all did, I think. Gordon, are you able to get down? 
hurt. I'm hurt bad. Jonah, can you go get that owl hoot while I go up and get Garden? Well, I'd a whole lot rather you go get him. Let me climb the pole, Roy. All right. Go up the opposite side, though. So you'll have the pole for protection from any bullets. Yeah, think of a author having to do things like this. Dale, take cover. Lie flat on the ground. I'm going after Bailey's man, and there may be more shooting. I'm with you, Roy. No, you take cover, too. I'll call if I need help. Roy starts ahead. Immediately, a shot is fired in his direction. He drops to the ground, realizing that the gunman is watching their every move. He starts ahead once more, cautiously. Another shot, nearer this time. Roy draws his own gun, fires. He sees something move and fires again. Just ahead, a man runs for cover. Roy's shots have come close. The gunman is trying to get to a place of protection. Roy leaps ahead after him. The gunman lunges desperately, and Roy throws himself forward. He whirls the gunman about and throws a hard punch to his head. The gunman staggers. Roy hits him again, then again, and the gunman goes to his knees. Have you learned not to shoot at a helpless man yet, or do you want some more? I've had enough, Rogers. I've had enough. There's men on horseback coming this way, Roy. It may be my uncle's men. What are you doing with these people, Pat? I'm with them all the way, Mac. Yeah, you chose the wrong side. That's your uncle and the rest of the boys coming. They heard the shots. They'll take care of you and them. Start moving, Mac. Step back to where the line's down. There's two men on that pole who have to be taken care of. Dale, Pat, keep out of sight. Yeah, but our guns will be ready. Yeah, the shooting camp men here someplace. That's right. Pat! Patty McCormick! Stand quiet, Mac. Really stationed him here for the night. Doesn't answer. That means he's in trouble. Don't move, Mac. A couple of you fellas scout around. Be careful. See if you... Hey, on that pole. Two men. Oh, 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 and Gordon. Oh, yeah. Maybe I can do something. My uncle's in. Forget those two men, Fred. We've got guns over here. Wait, 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 wait. That sounded like Roy Rogers. That's exactly who it is. Don't shoot. Whatever you do, Fred, don't shoot. Rogers has a gun in my back. Mac's telling the truth. We're holding him here until the two men on the telegraph pole get down safe. One move against them, and I'll pull the trigger. Hey, you bluffing, Rogers. Try something and see. All right, Jonah, bring Gordon on down. I don't believe anybody will try to interfere. You bet you, Roy. It may take us a couple of minutes, but we'll get there. Men peer through the darkness at the shadowy figures on the telegraph pole. Evil men like Fred Apt and the other Bailey riders. A few feet away, Roy holds a gun on Matty McCormick. Dale and Pat Sullivan stand ready for action. Slowly, very slowly, and painfully, Jonah struggles to lower the wounded lineman. Yeah, you better tell him to hurry, Rogers. I can't hold my men in check very long. You'd better, Fred, if you want your men to live. An almost impossible job lowering a wounded man. Jonah must depend upon the safety belt and his own strength. Roy and Dale are tense, afraid the two men may fall, afraid the darkness may cover some sudden action by the outlaw riders. Roy, will it be all right if I go over and see what I can do to help Jonah with Gordon when they get down? Good idea. Go ahead. I'll go with you, Dale. <laughs> Jonah is nearing the ground as Dale and Pat approach. They take the wounded man in their arms. Jonah drops the last few feet to the ground. All right, Roy. All right, we're down. Head up, down, Rogers. I'm still running this show. Dale, get Trigger, will you? Sure, Roy. Take him over there and put Gordon on his back. We'll have to trust Trigger to take him to town and hope that somebody there will get a doctor. Well, I'll be glad to ride him in, Roy. I'm afraid I can't spare you, Jonah. We've still got this bunch to look after. Uh-huh. Well, I just thought I'd let the doc look at the inside of my knees while I was there. I got skinless knees now, you know. That pole ain't been sanded. Hey, look, Rogers, how about me? Those hombres are off the pole. You said when they got down, I'd just be Just stay over... right where you are, Mac. I'll tell you when you can move. Pat and I have garden ready, Roy. Okay. Trigger fella, head for town. Get going, boy. Go on, fella. Okay, Rogers. What about us now? Why do we get off? You don't for a while. I'm holding you there until Trigger has a good start. And then? Then I'll turn you over to my partners while I climb up and fix that line. Because the line is going to be fixed before we leave here. Roy, isn't that someone else coming this way? Sure sounds like it. Roy, that rider, it's my uncle, I think. Sure it is. Ed Bailey himself. I'm afraid you'll have to stay right here for a little while longer, Mac. We may be in for a little fun. What's going on, Fred? You fellas were to report back after you investigated the shooting. Uh, we're in trouble, Mr. Bailey. We... Where's my foreman? Max here, Bailey, with us. Rogers. Just take it easy and nobody will be hurt. Do what Rogers says, Mr. Bailey. 
He's got me at the point You're of a... You're trespassing. Wait, Mr. Bailey, don't You're do that. you my land. Be careful now. And I've got a legal right to protect my property. Oh! Roy! Here, it's Pat. Bailey, you've hit your nephew. It isn't true. Pat wouldn't side with you people. He's hurt, Roy, bad. I'll kill you for this. Stand where you are. Pat is here by his own choice. Get Rogers! It was your shot that hit him, but we'll take care Get of it. Rogers! Pat needs attention, Bailey. If you're too yelling to do it, I'll take him myself. Bailey, you're delaying things. I'm not afraid of him or his gun. Come on. Get Rogers. Bailey, unmindful of Roy's guns, forgetting he has guns of his own, charges. A man gone mad by shock and grief. His riders follow, hypnotized by the fury of their leader. As Bailey's horse comes up, Roy throws Mac aside to save his life, steps out of the way and pulls Bailey to the ground. Dale and Jonah close in as Bailey's men dismount. This is to be a battle of many against a few. Dale, get Pat out of the way. Dale ducks through horses to drag the wounded man from the danger zone. Bailey and his men have forgotten everything save their overwhelming desire to take Roy. And with Jonah at his side, Roy stands firm, giving two blows for each one he takes. There's no chance for strategy. I got that pole, cat. Take another. There's plenty more. Guns are used as clubs, but time after time, Roy's fists drive the telling blows that cause men to go down. Now only Bailey is left. Roy and Bailey. It's your time, Rogers. You're gonna get it! A roaring animal, an animal gone mad. Bailey lunges at Roy, his hulking body towering over Roy, his club-like arms swinging. Roy clutches low. He springs. His fists drive into Bailey's stomach. Bailey falls back. Roy after him, swinging fast, hard. One, two. Bailey staggers. Roy waits, poised. Bailey goes down. He's through. The fight is finished. Good work, Dale. Jonah, let's gather him up and take him to town. We'll fix that line first. Yeah, I know. The line's fixed, Roy. I fixed it when I was up the pole with Gordon. That's great, Jonah. We'll take them in and see whether we go to jail for trespassing or they go for trying to kill. Say, right now's a good time for you to make a big discovery. Yes, sir. Just dig into a package of wonderful new Post Sugar Crisp and discover what a perfect snack it is while you're listening to Roy and his adventures. You bet. You'll love Post Sugar Crisp right out of the package. It's that good. And you'll have fun eating it all day long. Why, that delicious sugar and honey-coated puffed wheat was just made for round-the-clock nibbling. And say, Post Sugar Crisp makes breakfast mighty special, too. Pour on the milk or cream... No sugar needed. And just taste its candy-coated goodness. You'll be sure then you've never tasted a cereal like Post Sugar Crisp. If you don't happen to have any on hand now, be sure to get it tomorrow. Look for it in the giant or regular size red, white, and blue package with the three little bears on the front. As a cereal, it's dandy. For snacks, it's so handy. Or eat it like candy. That's Post Sugar Crisp. Pretty bad shape. He should be. The shape he's in is his own doing. His nephew meant more to him than his land, money, or anything else. And then to have shot the boy. I don't know what may happen to him if Pat dies. You mean as far as he himself is concerned? His mind. From the standpoint of the law, both he and Mac will probably go on trial for attempted murder. It's a bad business. And from what Bailey said on the way here, the whole thing started just because he wanted Dick Harris fired. That's it. Well, Bailey's always had his own way, running over people. He must have known as well as anybody else that the telegraph company has a right to service their line. Of course he did. How's Pat, Jonah? Did you find out? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the bullets out. And Gordon's fixed up, too. But the doc is mad enough to tear up his diploma. The doc is? Yeah. Says people are plumb ungrateful to go shooting each other when he's so busy taking care of storm victims. Jonah. Oh, howdy, Tin Star. I understand you are an author. Mm-hmm. And that you're writing a book about the people you've met and the experiences you've had with them. Is that right? Well, Sheriff, your words is all right, but the tune you're singing sounds like a war song. Is that right? Answer me. Well, what do you want to know for? Because I found five pages of scribbling out in the street. Oh, good. Jonah's been worried about those, Sheriff. Yeah. 
Well, Tin Star, I will give you a reward. Why, Just a minute. Let me quote. Uh, <clears throat> this polecat was known as Missing Matthew to some, because his shots always went wild. Others known him as Megaphone Matthew, because his voice was such that all the birds left the country every time he opened his big mouth. Yeah, yeah, I say, yeah, good, ain't it? <laughs> but he was famous for one thing. Yelling, stop in the name of the law, while galloping away from the man he was chasing. Real famous. Uh -oh. I think you're in trouble, Jonah. No doubt you believe anyone who knew this gentleman will be able to identify him by your description? Why, shucks, yes. I say yes. The kind of writing I do is as plain All as... All right. Plain. You're going to jail. <laughs> well, <laughs> a libel. <laughs> I'll take this to the Supreme Court if necessary. I'll prove no bird in the world ever left the country because of my voice. Whoa, hold on now. I defy anyone to name a single instance where whoa, I... Whoa, get... whoa, now, whoa, now, whoa. Wait a minute, Sheriff. Why, you rattle-brained banshee, whatever made you think you was important enough to be put in a book? What? You were, you missing Matt. You was an old army buddy of mine, a member of the military police. Oh, well, no, uh, uh, well, well, well. It looks as though uh, he's uh, got you, Sheriff. It sure does. Of course, if the shoe fits, put it on. No, wait. Put I'm... it on and wear it. Uh, you're wrong. This description doesn't fit me at all. Nothing like me. Yeah, <laughs> come to think of it, maybe you would make a good character for me to write about at that. Don't you dare <laughs> if you as much as mention my... Sheriff, now take it easy. We're going to have to have a new rule around here. From now on, Jonas to let me read every chapter he writes, and then we'll lock the pages up in the safe. <laughs> it might be a good idea to keep him so busy he doesn't have time to write, Roy. <laughs> oh, no, you can't do that. Nobody listens when I talk. <laughs> I have to. Oh, we won't do that. I don't want anyone to ever say I prevented a talent from being developed. And Jonah does have a great talent. Don't you, Jonah? Paint was the devil's saint, and his eyes were a fiery red. Good men have tried this horse to ride, and all of them are dead. Now, I won't brag, but I rode this night till his blood began to boil. Then I hit the ground and ate three pounds of good old western soil. Singing high-ho, whoopie-dye-ho, ride them high and down you go, sons of the western soil. Singing high-ho, whoopie-dye-ho, ride them high and down you go, sons of the western soil. I swore by heck I'd break his neck for the jolt he gave my pride. I threw my noose on that old cayuse and once more took a ride. He turned around and soon I found his head where his tail should be. So I says, says I, perhaps he's shy or he just don't care for me. Singing high-ho, whoopie-dye-ho, ride him high and down you go, sons of the western soil. Singing high-ho, whoopie-dye-ho, ride him high and down you go, sons of the western soil. In town one day a chance to stray up on old Sheriff Jim For a hoop and a holler and a counterfeit dollar I sold that nag to him But when he plants the seat of his pants in Skyball's leather chair I'll bet four bits when Skyball quits old Jim will not be there Sing high, oh, whoopie-dye-ho, ride em high, and down you go, sons of the western soil. Sing high, oh, whoopie-dye-ho, ride em high, and down you go, sons of the western soil. Sons of the western soil. Sons of the western soil. That's all for now, folks. This is Roy Rogers saying to all of you, from all of us, Goodbye, good luck, and may the good Lord take a liking to you. See you next week. Happy trails to you Until we meet again Happy trails to you Keep smiling until then The Roy Rogers Show is brought to you by Post Serial each week at this same time with the Whippoorwills, Forrest Lewis, Dale Evans, and the king of the cowboys himself, 
Roy Rogers. An Art Brush production transcribed. Directed by Tom Hargis. Script by Ray Wilson. Music by Milton Charles. Featured in today's cast were Frank Hemingway, Herb Butterfield, Don Harvey, Charles Seal, Bill Green, and Tim Graham. This is Art Ballinger speaking for P.O.S.T. Post Serials. Happy trails to you Until we meet again Happy trails to you Keep smiling on till then Who cares about the clouds if we're together Just sing a song and bring the sunny weather Happy trails